Will, welcome to the podcast. Good to be here, man. All right. Yeah. So this podcast is sponsored by Come Float With Us. Come Float With Us, <laughs> yeah. yes. And here we are in the back room of Come Float With Us, uh, sitting here with our number one floater, Will. And uh, we're going to talk today about becoming your best self. Well, what personal challenges have you gone through in your life that elicited something inside of you that you knew you needed to grow? The most powerful was when I had my spinal cord injury. Um, I was getting a lot of messages before that spinal cord injury. I, I think I've told you a little bit about it. Um, I suffered from a addiction to something called GHB, which was a uh, bodybuilding drug back in the late 80s, early 90s, that guys used to take for sleeping aid. And um, I got into that because I always had sleeping issues. Um, I was always like this neurotic night owl. I had to like stay up to like 3 o'clock in the morning until like maybe two years ago. I was like a super night owl. So I used to take a lot of GHB, but then I realized that if you took small amounts of GHB, it would give you this euphoric effect, like sort of like this alcohol effect. Mm -hmm. Like a buzz. Like a buzz, exactly. It's very similar to, I don't want to say it's exactly like alcohol, it's a little bit more uplifting, <laughs> but GHB is super addicting. It sounds that way. Um, it, to make a long story short, it affects the GABA levels in your brain. And what happens is when those levels are constantly being stimulated artificially, um, when you stop taking it, those levels are really low. Mm -hmm. And think of the GABA, the GABA is like it calms your nervous system down. So when it's depleted really bad, your body ramps up something called glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter. Right. So you go into this like fight or flight state. Yeah. And like, alcoholics go through it too, right? They shake, Withdrawal. they can't sleep. Whereas like a meth, a person coming off of crystal meth will want to sleep for two days. Yeah. It's the exact opposite. You can't sleep, you sweat, you feel terrible. So um, unfortunately, yeah, I got addicted to GHB. Uh, one night I was super high on it and um, I actually fell asleep while smoking a cigarette standing up and smashed my head into this pole on my porch. And as I laid there par like paralyzed, um, it was, you know, that was it. I've done a lot of stupid stuff while on GHB. And um, eventually one of those activities I used to do high on GHB would have either got me killed or somebody else killed. So... Your behavior needed to change. It needed to change. And I had the intuition. I just didn't know how to read it. I didn't know what it meant. I just was labeling it as depression. But it was really this, hey, let's get out of this box that you're in. But I wow. couldn't, couldn't read it. So, yeah, at that moment when I was, you know, amongst 40 ex-drug addicts doing a Tai Chi session with this lady, and some of the people are laughing around me like, what the hell is this, yeah. you know? I forget which move, move we were doing. It was like a really basic move. But you took it more seriously because you... Yeah. So you knew you needed to change, and you felt like this was working for you this yeah practice yeah. and at the time i had you know i had just gotten out of the hospital so i was like using crutches my whole right side was like i only had about 30 percent of the functioning so to do that tai chi it sounds really crazy but it's almost like um well just to make it clear to the people who would be listening to this half of my body has lost its nerves so it almost feels like this strong tingling sensation on the right side of my body, but I'm so used to it mm -hmm. that um, now I don't really pay attention to it or I'm not conscious of it. But um, it almost made the Tai Chi easier to do mm -hmm. because I already kind of had that connection to the energy around my body. I don't know if, I mean, it could be total bullshit in my head, but for some reason it made it easier mm -hmm. to get into that meditative state. And I'll, I'll never forget when I first felt that, how freeing and amazing that was. And it was in Kaiser, in an outpatient drug program. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny um, how you asked, you know, how tragedy and how these, ch like you, you said a challenge, I believe you said a challenge. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the best moments in your life. Because, you know, so many people get discouraged after stuff like that. And, and sometimes it's the best thing that could ever happen to you. What I love about the floating is the after effect. Uh, you know, so many people talk about the experience in the float. 
I feel like some of the best experiences come after the flow. Yeah. After you have a psychedelic experience, is some, when you're, you know, in that sort of in between stage, right, mm -hmm. where um, you just feel floaty. Right. Because I feel like sometimes you shouldn't have a goal in the tank. Mm -hmm. You should just experience and That's just right. see where you go. Yeah. And what the hell does your ego know, anyways? Really, right? Yeah. When you, I mean, you can go in there with an intention. But I think to have like to, to treat it like a genie, like some people like I've done this, like where you meditate almost like, like it's like a genie effect. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to do it to get something out of it. You're missing the point of the meditation. You meditate to just experience it. Yeah, experience God inside yeah, of you. Yeah, exactly. And, and, it's, and then it's, that takes you to the place where you need to be, so it can manifest as those different experiences. Because sometimes I've gone in there and. You know, I'll have a very outer body experience, and sometimes I stay very grounded in the tank, and then I have the best experience after. Yeah. So it, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how it's like nature knows what you need. Yeah, you've turned me on to so many cool things, man. And one of the best ones is a static dance. <laughs> but a static dance was like, to, to be around that amount of people and to have all that energy in there, and then you, you almost form that like hive not hive mind, but hive soul, if you will, and you feel it as opposed to just doing it by yourself in your house. Yeah. And it broke me out of that. I like before I could never dance in public unless I was drunk. Right. And, and that's what most people yeah. say going into it. Wait, you go dance at ten o'clock in the morning on a Sunday? What's the matter with you? Yeah. And people and people. And once again, it's like in our culture, we always feel like we have to have a point. Mm -hmm. There has to be a point to everything. But there is no point. You're There's just no going point. there to experience it. There's no point. Yeah. And so when you try to explain it to people, they have a hard time understanding that. Like one guy goes, oh, so there's a lot of hot girls there? Like, <laughs> hitting on girls? I'm like, no, you can't even talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure, you realize there's more to you. Mm -hmm. Like most people have an idea of their mind as being this sort of, like, this concoction of electrical activity in the brain, and you're this person looking outwards from your eyes and you're limited to this personality and your environment, they don't realize that beyond that there's consciousness which has no bounds it's, and it, it can't be described even by words, you have to experience it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is that um, it's difficult to explain to people what the, how powerful they are if they haven't experienced it. Right. You have to, that's why I'm a fan of psychedelics, because it can get people to that state right away. That's right. As opposed to, okay, you know, come to a static dance, try it. Yeah. Maybe they like it or not. Oh, give them the kundalini. If they're very, if, if they identify with themselves very strongly, it, it can be difficult to lead people to that point. But I feel like now people are having more experiences probably than the past because we're expanding in consciousness on the planet. Yeah. So you're going to see more and more people having these sort of, uh, what do they call them, a satori in Buddhism. It's like this mm -hmm. flash of enlightenment. So have, um, have psychedelics allowed you to tap into your greater self, your higher yes. self? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, when I first took mushrooms, I was sitting on my couch with my girlfriend at the time, Erica, and it's amazing because when it started to come on, it wasn't like, oh shit, what is this? It was, I remember this. This is how I felt as a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no meaning. It's just experience. There's pure experience. And I remember like looking at my hand and it was on the couch. And I go, there is no hand or couch. There's just that. There's consciousness. Mm -hmm. you know, it's all one thing. There's yeah. no separate self here. And to yeah. get that realization, you know, on a Friday night, <laughs> yeah. you know, in my house, just bam, right there, it, it, it propelled me so much further. Mm -hmm. it, it would have taken me so much longer to reach that state. Yeah, so and because you and I share those experiences, or you could, you're able to verbalize some of the experiences you've had on mm -hmm. the shrooms, 
it allows me to like think about that and go deeper into my own life and experience and I can mm -hmm. benefit from you sharing your experiences on, on psychedelics. And then once you're turned on like that, your Shakti, your Kundalini is turned on in some way, it never gets turned off, you know. Mm -hmm. and, but if you stoke it and you keep mm -hmm. like playing, like not playing with it, but just, you know, making it accessible in your yeah. life, it moves through you, the Kundalini energy, the Chi, the life force. Uh -huh moves through you into yeah. your life and into your world and you become all you uh -huh. hear and and you know it you're conscious of it and you know it's difficult to play the victim after that you know mm -hmm. it's difficult to think yeah. that once you know that and once you experience that you can't ever go back and you can't ever turn yourself off again so it's good to be elevated in that way you know uh, throughout your life and mm -hmm. and having a practice, a spiritual practice in the morning or um, something that keeps you in that, gets you a dose, your dose of consciousness that uh, comes from you, comes from within. So you don't have to, you know, do a static dance for an hour before you break through all the... Or 10 years or... Yeah, you know, or 10 long. years on a mountain somewhere. Meditate. Who has time yeah. for that? Yeah, you exactly. Know? So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and what it really taught me too is that you don't get rid of depression if you get rid of something you're identifying as it being something separate you look at it as awareness yeah. and you put no meaning on it and you just fully experience that and what you find is it's just sensations that your ego has put a bunch of thoughts and meaning on yeah, exactly. As because it feels like something out here is dangerous. It's got to preserve the status quo. Yeah. So to to break through that and, and and see what's real there, you you can almost transcend those. They don't ever go away. Yeah. But you don't. You don't. You just don't mind them anymore. It's yeah. like they just melt. It just melts away. Mm -hmm. Just becoming conscious of the feeling. And just being with it and accepting it and thanking it for being there because without it you couldn't experience all the good yeah right it's the shadow it's given that that's right dual aspect you know you wouldn't know what love was unless there's fear so fear love fear fear is you fear is your shadow bring that shadow into the light and hug it and love it for what it is because it's just as much as you are as the light because you're neither your consciousness watching these two play together but you're that too right it's just crazy man it's you always have to remember you're always there in that space you just dream that you're not so when you're in this big you know ego trip just know you're you know you're always there your awareness yeah it's you know, i think effort. sometimes we get the sensation of oh I, it's like we look at the spiritual path like it's this competition like oh today i had you know, some really bad thoughts and I believed them for a little bit. Oh man, all that work, I, all those experiences I had before are just bullshit yeah. now. Oh no, I, know, I, I know, lost my trophy. No, <laughs> it's, that's making an ego out of the path. Mm -hmm. So it's like you, the spiritual path is a metaphor, right? You're just expanding consciously yes. all the time. All the time. You You're know, hurling through space. Hurling, it's always changing. And when you start to look for it, that's when you kind of kill it. That's right. You want to just let it be, and I got to just let that be. And when anybody has a something like that happen, you just got to let it be. You can't just be spiritual and live from that place when things are going well. Like you said, like looking from the big picture. Mm -hmm. We don't know what, like the ego can't understand what's, you know, what consciousness is. It's not designed to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a very narrow perspective so like when things like that happen there is always a bigger bigger perspective the bigger perspective is it's leading you somewhere and it's just follow the flow it's unfolding. don't resist it it's unfolding every day yeah just like you're, you're you know, watching your own book you know just turn the page mm -hmm. so just go into the awareness and be there and it always will manifest in this. Whatever it is that it's taken you, just go with it. You'll know. You know, the heart chakra is all, I mean, it's all about love and connection, and it is. But it's also about, you gotta have courage. Trust. 
you know, and trust that. It's sometimes your highest calling means going through things that are uncomfortable to you at that moment. It can't oh, it's not always going to be comfortable. That's right. And those feelings that you think are depression and anger, that's your shadow. Love that feeling, and then what you realize, oh, that's not depression, that's repressed consciousness, right? And then you you love that, and then you integrate it. That's where the light and the shadow integrate, right? The left and right brains, you know, you're in this flow state, and um, you realize that all that raw anger and depression that was manifesting as a drug addiction or getting pissed off at your spouse or friends. It actually was the raw primal energy that was going to propel you into your goal. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, man, it's it's really cool. That that that's the number one thing is loving your shadow. Mm. And even when it says "fuck you" to you and it's mad and you get like you get a thought that's really like like oh, I want that guy cut me off. No, love that thought. Love it and say thank you, fear. It's like alchemy. You're changing that depression into energy that fuel. It's like natural coffee. Yeah, exactly. It's your that that kundalini life force energy that mm -hmm. comes in many forms, and when it's uh, channeled in that way, like breaking through your fears, having courage of the heart to follow your trust your yourself, trust the flow, and know that. It's coming out for your best interest and your highest good. All right, Will, thank you so much yeah, for man. coming cool. to my podcast. Yeah, it's our a podcast. pleasure, man. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so come float with us. All right, yeah, come float with us. All right.